Chapter One of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carol Pelster. Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved by Father Francis Finn. Chapter One in which claude puzzles frank elmwood that newcomer's a queer boy observed john winter he's lively as a kitten said rob collins i've been keeping an eye on him ever since the beginning of recess and i don't think there's a square foot of ground in the college yard he hasn't passed over he's tripped up five or six fellows already and just managed to get off being kicked at least twice i think added rob solemnly and bringing into use the latest knowledge he had gleaned from a passing fit of attention in chemistry class i really do think that he's one of the mercury compounds whereupon frank elmwood the third of the group rang a chestnut bell in answer to which rob indignantly disclaimed any attempt at joking look exclaimed john breaking in upon the playful dispute of these two bosom friends your compound of mercury is going to get into trouble i'm afraid he's fooling around worden worden will kick him sure prophesied rob yes and hard too the overgrown bully commented frank with a certain amount of bitterness in his voice and a frown upon his pale energetic face the three speakers were leaning at ease against the storm door which opens upon the playground of milwaukee college it was ten o'clock recess and the yard was everywhere alive with moving human figures like birds of swift passage baseballs were flying through the air in all directions and on the run of course the multitudinous legs of small boys were moving from point to point during recess the younger students seldom condescend to walk but yielding to their natural and healthy inclinations spend that quarter of an hour in a state of what is for the most part breathless animation but among all these flying figures the newcomer was eminently conspicuous he seemed to move upon springs which in their perfection just fell short of wings on the way to worden he startled charlie pearson the quietest lad in the college by leaping clean over his shoulders charlie had been standing engrossed in watching a game of dodgeball his head bent forward his hands clasped behind his back and fortunately for the nonce his legs spread so as to afford him a good purchase for the shock when without warning the young madcap came flying over his head confound your cheek cried charlie the lazy benevolent smile on his face almost disappearing if i catch you i'll pound your muscle till it's sore and as he spoke he took after the dancing madcap whoop hi hi catch me sang out rob's chemical compound as with his head craned so as to keep his pursuer in sight he broke into a swift run followed heavily and clumsily by charlie who was not given to hard exercise now it so happened that dan dockery a lively lad and intimate friend of charlie had been intently watching the proceedings of the young vaulter taking advantage of the fleeing boy's position of head dan planted himself without being observed in the path of the runner as he had desired a collision followed dan staggered back a few steps while the lively youth bounded to one side like a rubber ball rolled over and over rose with a spring and a bound and before charlie could catch him sprang away and dashed head first into the stomach of no less a person than the bully worden for the moment worden lost all power of speech but retained sufficient presence of mind to grasp his unwitting assailant in a vice-like grip 
thus caught in the toils the newcomer set about a process of wriggling and squirming which it is difficult to imagine and impossible to set down legs and arms writhed and bent while the whole body twisted and turned in every conceivable posture till the eye became dazed and blurred in following the swift changes but worden still choking and gasping held on grimly the small boy who butted him in the stomach was not likely to forget the incident to the last day of his life you wretched little rowdy he began recovering his breath and endeavouring to put his captive into a position where he could best be kicked i'll teach you a lesson by way of reply the small boy effected a miraculous wriggle which brought him through worden's legs and rendered the intended operation of kicking for the time being impracticable but worden still preserved his hold and at once made a strenuous effort to bring the wriggler back into position at this point pearson and dockery who despised worden as bullies are wont to be despised by the small boy came to the rescue they sang in unison worden worden went a burden on a summer's day worden worden went a burden and the birds they flew away and then by way of chorus a dozen youngsters in the vicinity chimed in with worden worden went a burden and didn't he run away this was too much for the hero of these doggerels releasing his intended victim he started off in chase of his serenaders the cause of all this disturbance now made directly for the trio who were still leaning against the storm door what a stout pair of legs he's got exclaimed collins and he moves with such ease i never saw a little chap in knee breeches yet that looked so strong and graceful yes assented elmwood and at the same time he has such a sunny face it's a healthy face too it's not too chubby and his complexion is really fine and look at the smile he wears continued john winter it's what i would call sympathetic <coughs> grunted rob i mean said john colouring that it makes you feel gay to look at it you can see from the straight way he holds himself and from his build that he's a mighty strong little chap he looks sunny that's the word his hair is really sunny he's really a pretty boy pshaw growled frank sunniness may be the right word but prettiness certainly isn't almost any little boy who's dressed well and who's not thoroughly bad looks pretty but this little chap is interesting hello spexy cried the object of these remarks who had been staring at his critics for full half a minute rob and john joined in a laugh at frank's expense though only seventeen frank wore spectacles hello sublimate of mercury you're another and twice anything you call me came the quick answer i say i like this school immensely there's a yard to it where a fellow's got room enough to move around in what school did you go to before you came here frank inquired sixteenth district till a few days ago what happened then i got expelled as he made this answer he favoured frank with a series of winks he had blue eyes not over large but with a snap and sparkle about them which added much to the sunshininess of his appearance stop your winking and tell us why you were expelled pursued frank the artless youth had been hopping about impatiently during this dialogue and as frank put him the last question he flew at john winter seized john's hat and without further ado took to his heels with an ejaculation expressive partly of amusement partly of annoyance john took after him he was the youngest and smallest of the trio indeed though a member of the class of poetry he still went about in knickerbockers but in running he was second to none of his class-fellows 
after a sharp pursuit he captured the snatcher of hats and brought him back wriggling to frank and rob <sighs> now puffed john retaining his firm grasp on our young friend's wrist tell us about your being expelled i was expelled for nothing there with a wriggle let me go will you more wriggles let me go i say still more wriggles ow stop squeezing and in a seeming paroxysm of pain the wriggler fell into a complete state of collapse and hung limp a dead weight from john's hand while lines and spasms of pain chased about his most expressive face softened by pity john let go in a flash the limpness was gone and the brightest happiest sunniest boy his hair shot with gold and dancing to its owner's motions was hopping and skipping before the three poets his right thumb raised to his pretty little nose and four fingers wriggling like the fingers of an excited italian in the heart of the italian game of mora yeah yeah fooled you didn't i oh didn't i take him in Spexy? tell us how you got expelled said rob and i'll give you some chocolate caramels there was a cessation of hop and skip how many five or six will you give me one to start on rob handed him a caramel now continued the sunny one as he put the candy in his mouth how'll i know that you'll give me the rest well i suppose you can trust me no you don't i know your brother walter and he says you're no good you just pass those caramels over to Spexy. i like Spexy. and the frank young gentleman glanced at elmwood with open admiration all right johnny said rob as he executed the condition you needn't call me johnny continued the newcomer sidling toward frank and making a sudden but unsuccessful grab at the candy in his hand my name is claude claude lightfoot and don't you forget it Spexy. in answer to this appeal frank gave him a caramel we're not particular about your name put in john winter anxious to quote what's in a name that which we call a rose just what i was going to say interrupted elmwood with a mischievous twinkle in his eye go on claude and tell us about your expulsion it was all on account of a billy goat and a lightning rod ah said rob did the billy goat strike the lightning rod before replying claude extorted a third caramel from frank no it didn't last wednesday a fellow stumped me to bring my billy goat to school general jackson that was his name behaved like a gentleman as long as we were outside the school building i tied him up in the yard but just as soon as i started to go into school general jackson began to get frisky and then the fellow that stumped me loosed him and he came bumping in after me who the fellow that stumped you no the general i wanted to run him out but a lot of fellows stood at the door and shooed at him then general jackson got mad and went just a tearing down that hall and sent a lot of girls a squealing and one or two of them sprawling and i came charging after some of those girls said that i was setting him on i caught the general after he had scared the wits out of two of the women teachers one of them had her hand on her breast and it was heaving like anything and the other was standing on a chair with her skirts gathered about her the way they all do when they see a mouse the principal came down on me then where did he come down on you on my hands both of them and said that next time i cut up he'd expel me for being something or other uncursable i think he said incorrigible you mean claude suggested winter that's it i only heard the word once and i was too excited to notice how he said it so i went home and made up my mind not to take any more risks 
but the next day a fellow stumped me just before class to climb up the lightning rod to the third story and offered me a big apple if i'd do it i forgot to think and caught hold of that lightning rod and began to climb it hand over hand where did you learn to climb frank inquired i didn't learn at all Spexy. it just came natural i reckon so i got up almost as high as the second story when one of those lady teachers saw me from a third-story window and maybe she didn't yell <laughs> then a couple of other teachers of course they were ladies who heard her singing out put their heads out and they just howled and i tell you i began to work my way down as fast as i knew how but it was no use before i got to the ground the principal was standing at the door and making eyes at me through his specs when i got on my feet he asked me whether i could find my way home he was awful funny with me sarcastic you mean said rob maybe i do anyhow it was a funny way of being funny he told me never to show my face in that school again and that fellow wouldn't give me the apple either he wouldn't even give me half so i went home feeling bad about it all especially about the apple suggested frank that's so spexy it was mean i told ma and kate all about it you see i wanted them to fix it all right with pa who's awful fond of the public schools did he go to the public schools himself no he was born in canada and didn't come here till he was twenty well claude said frank it's about time for you to come to a catholic school anyhow sure it suits me all over answered claude who was now making repeated endeavors to touch the back of his neck with the sole of his right foot ma's been wanting me to go ever since i left miss wilton's private school two months ago she and my sister kate are anxious for me to get ready for my first communion pa was vexed and wanted to put me to work when ma and kate want him over then the president of this college didn't seem to care about taking a boy that had been expelled then i got a letter from miss wilton and kate had a long talk with the president and now i'm here on trial pa says he hopes they'll expel me from this college too but pa is so careful about me you see he wants me to be an american why put in john were you born in new zealand ah oh, now aren't you funny i was born here just as much as you were and twice as much too pa thinks that if a boy wants to be an american he's got to go to an american school what's the matter with this college queried rob i don't know what's here claude sprang upon elmwood's back and was within a little of bringing that dignified young gentleman to the ground as claude's evident intention was merely to demonstrate the warmth of his friendship frank contented himself with reaching back after claude and setting the young bundle of nerves upon his feet again if you don't behave yourself sir he said with a suppressed smile i'll put you over my knees claude was about to make some derisive comment upon this remark when suddenly his face changed and he darted away like a minnow when it catches sight of a pike worden in this instance was the pike he came rushing past the three poets with an expression of anticipatory triumph when frank elmwood caught him by the arm quick as thought young winter who was something of a wag and a tease seized worden's right hand and shook it warmly how are you worden glad to see you cried john with a malicious grin and i say worden old boy you're losing your dignity added frank what's your hurry anyhow worden fully frank's equal in size and weight was meantime endeavouring to break away from the strong nervous grasp upon his arm and in two minds as to swearing at these grinning captors look here elmwood let go drop my hand winter let go i say let go come you fellows are making a fool of me they might just as well try to make a square circle put in rob 
as with a bow and a smile he advanced to welcome amiable mr worden who for a wonder kept his temper lest something worse should happen to him is the mercury arrangement out of reach yet asked frank of rob sure he's at the far end of the yard trying to see how high he can kick all right you can go worden and next time you get after a small boy you heroic fraud we hope you'll have worse luck than you had now worden looked bowie knives at frank puffed his lower lip into a baby pout stuck his thumbs in his vest and walked away with a sorry attempt at dignity he made no further offer that day to wreak vengeance on claude for although he was not a boy of fine discernment there was something in the tone of frank's voice which he recognized as a note of warning as worden walked away frank's face settled into an expression of study he took off his glasses and while eyeing them with his severest look rubbed them vigorously a penny for your thoughts frank ventured rob i'm thinking of that sunny scalawag who is now kicking his legs about as though there never had been a yesterday and it never occurred to him that there'd be a to-morrow he's bound to have hard times just as sure as he lives to grow up at present he has about as much sense of responsibility as a kitten now i'm wondering how he'll develop it's so hard to imagine almost any small boy changing into a man but in most you can see a faint streak of seriousness but claude strikes me as being the concentrated essence of small boy and i can't even begin to imagine how or when he'll change oh i guess it'll come about in the ordinary way said john winter we were all small boys once you needn't grin at me because i'm in knickerbockers i can write verses and essays and yet three years ago i used to wonder how boys in poetry class could do those things i think you've given the true solution said rob we change with years and claude will take his medicine just as we did and change in the usual way i don't believe it i can't imagine it said frank and frank was right claude's change was not to be the work of time the difficulties of that change its seeming impossibility and its sudden accomplishment form the subject matter of this narrative end of chapter one